We've had a pretty good day in the park today, although we've seen nothing that's been really epic. But we've seen a lot of the usual animals, giraffe, zebra, impala, elephants, buffalo, waterbuck and so on. It's now late afternoon and we're taking a drive out to the Majulu waterhole. The Majulu waterhole is just a few kilometers north of Bergendal. So if you're staying there over a night then it's a very good spot to spend the late afternoon. We arrived at Majulu to find that there was a carcass of a dead buffalo lying in the waterhole itself and quite a few buffalo milling about, two very close by, almost as if they were standing in vigil over the dead buffalo in the water. On the plains, not too far from the waterhole, we saw the lions that were obviously responsible for the kill. It was still very, very hot, probably close to 40 degrees centigrade, and the lions were suffering in the heat. One of the nice things about Majulu is that you can park on the road above the waterhole and look down on the plains. And in fact, some of the lions were moving so close to the cars that it was quite easy to get good quality photographs, even with the most basic cell phone. A young elephant came strolling onto the plains between the lions and the waterhole, and it was interesting to see how he sniffed the air, obviously not quite happy with the smell of the carcass, and maybe even with the smell of the lions themselves. He showed his displeasure by trumpeting loudly before wandering off for a quiet drink before leaving. Whenever the buffalo moved away from the waterhole, it gave the lions an opportunity to stroll down and take up their positions again, but quite often they had hardly settled down to their meal when the buffalo came back. The lions were very, very nervous of the buffalo, watching them carefully and dashing off whenever the buffalo got too close. These are Cape buffalo, the biggest of all the buffalo in the world, weighing anything up to 800 kilograms, which makes them almost twice the weight of the lions. So it's not unreasonable that the lions would be nervous of taking a buffalo head on. Although they regularly prey on buffalo in Kruger, they will always take the buffalo from behind, with other members of the pride quickly joining in. They will never take on a buffalo face to face in single combat. Buffalo, of course, are herbivores, eating only grass, leaves and other plant matter. They might live for up to about 12 years in the wild and up to double that in captivity. This kill took place sometime during the night. We're not sure exactly when. It may have been in the evening or in the early morning. But it was clear that by the time we saw the carcass, the lions had had a good feed on it already. It turned out that this kill had been carried out by a pride of just six lions, so they were likely to continue feeding for several days still. Female lions will eat an average of about five kilograms of meat per day and males probably a bit more, maybe up to 7 kilograms per day, but both sexes can eat up to 30 kilograms in one sitting. The lions in Kruger are amongst the biggest lions in the world, with an adult lion weighing up to 220 kilograms. The lions in India, by example, are about 20 kilograms lighter. The males are larger than the females, and you can probably pick that up from the video a little later on. Lions are the only members of the cat family that live in social groups and these groups or prides can often consist of up to 20 individuals so this pride of just 6 lions was therefore well less than the average. Males are usually kicked out of the pride when they reach sexual maturity at the age of about 2 years. In the wild, lions live for around 15 years and in captivity for quite a bit longer, up to 20 years. They are quite lazy animals though, and when there is an abundance of food they will just sleep or lie in the shade for up to 20 hours a day and spend very little time actually hunting. The lions and the buffalo just continued to swap positions at the waterhole, and as evening approached we noticed that there were five spotted hyenas that had appeared on the scene. They were lurking in the distance most of the time, and any close approach to the kill was quickly seen off by one of the lions. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe down below. Thank you. Unfortunately, it was getting late and it was time for us to return to Bergendal before the gates closed, but we planned to return early in the morning. We returned to the Majula waterhole the following morning to find that very little had changed. 
The kill was still in the water hole and the lions were still in attendance, although there was only one lioness actually at the water hole guarding the kill from the spotted hyenas lurking in the distance. So we decided to leave Majula for the day. There was still so much else to see in Kruger and then we planned to return to this spot later in the day. Many of the buffalo in Kruger are attended by ox beckers, which help to control the abundance of ticks. By contrast, we never ever saw a lion with ox beckers on it, although their ears are very often infested with ticks. Take a look at this male lion that we photographed earlier in the week. Back to the spectacle below us. A lone lioness was feeding and keeping a wary eye on her surroundings, when an elephant crossed the road behind us, passing very close to our car, before descending the slope towards the kill. The lioness was quick to retreat and didn't come back until well after the elephant had left the area. Generally, lions and elephants will not interact regularly, but there have been some well-documented reports of a pride of lions in the Savuti region of the Chobe National Park in Botswana, which have specialized in killing and feeding on elephants. Quite amazing. Although lions are regarded as apex predators with very few enemies, the mortality rate amongst cubs is extremely high, with less than 20% of cubs reaching maturity. With the evening drawing in, the hyenas ventured a little closer to the kill. The saga playing out at the Majulu waterhole was far from over, with the hyenas still to play their part and the vultures yet to put in an appearance. But as luck would have it, our time at the crew had come to an end. We were due to leave the park and sadly wouldn't be around to witness the final acts.